Hi, I'm Dana Blickensdurfer and welcome to Art Talks. Today we're at the lovely Tampa Museum of Art with curator and our guest today, Joanna Robotham, and our host, Reagan Cosper. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're so excited. We're in the lecture hall, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, museum. But before we get started with the good down to the questions, we like to do an icebreaker. But don't worry, you're the judge today. Okay. So we're going to do a three-minute time of a portrait of you, and then you get to pick the best one based on composition or color. We use three colors, blue, white, and black. Okay. And we time it for three minutes. So you ready? Yeah, you better pick mine. I know, right? Let's see what happens. So I'll, I'll start, I'll keep time. Cause do you have a watch or do you want to do it? Uh, I do, let me do it on my phone. Okay, perfect. Let me just see. Okay. So we got some, we only can use one the rules are one big brush and one tiny brush each. The yeah. last time I did this, I ended up painting myself, so. Yeah, she was actually looking at someone <laughs> and painting. Which is <laughs> painted me anyway. Which is wild. And it's dark. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ready? Yes. One, two, three, go. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. It's really convenient that you're wearing, you're wearing blue. blue. Yeah, you're wearing all the right colors. I know, I was wondering if you matched it to my dress. <laughs> that would have been awesome. doing this on a piano table, so I don't want to get anyone in trouble with this is like a thick bird fit. <laughs> I'm usually a lot better, but the museum makes me nervous. How about that? Oh, don't be nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. That didn't go away. <laughs> we encourage artists from all different do you, skills you, and levels. Do you for fun or anything? I do all? not. I am absolutely terrible at making art. That's really? why I curate. Because oh, okay. I, I appreciate what artists do, and it's such a skill and such a talent, and I admire them greatly. It is. What got you in love with art or the field? Do you have like a memory of like something? Uh, you know, it just kind of really came out of the blue. I wasn't expecting to um, be a curator when I was in college or go into art, but it just one day. Yeah. So, and I'm thrilled. I'm really lucky to have this job. Yeah, it's Joanna, you'll have to eventually make a decision. 
We don't we don't care either way. What I really like, like I think that you really captured um, kind of my face and my um, torso, but I really love the way um, my hair is captured. In the oh yeah, the hair is the characteristic. Yeah. Do people notice you for your hair? I think so. It's a little, you know, yeah. Florida weather gets really frizzy. It's difficult to have curly hair here. Well, but yes, both are great. I'm sorry, I can't pick. It's, it's a tie. It's a tie. It's a tie. Last time Dean. All right, so thank you. So we're a tie. Um, that was good. So your yours was the hair. Mine, Mine was, was the, the hair. features, the face mm -hmm. feature. I'll get you next time. Yeah. I will win. I'll get a win. I haven't gotten into win yet, but it's fine. So we know you're super busy, mm -hmm. and we just want to know what the a day in the life is like for you, like as a curator here. Goodness, every day is a bit different. That's what's so great about my job. Um, right now we're in the middle of installing our fall exhibitions, which open next week on September 12th. Um, we are opening a show um, on Jean-Michel Basquiat, a very small focus show oh, wow. on two of his paintings. Mm -hmm. um, our collection of 91 Purvis Young paintings, a self-taught self artist based in Miami, and an exhibition of Haitian voodoo flags, which are these beautiful, sequined, colorful, vibrant flags. So right now it's just, you know, making sure all the work is safely hung on the wall, all the texts are being written. Um, but meanwhile, behind the scenes, you know, we're still plugging away on our, just our everyday administrative duties. We um, have a shipment coming in for a new acquisition. Um, there are the emails to catch up on. And of course, just thinking beyond next week, there are exhibitions that still need planning for next year. So every day is quite varied. We are a small department, mm -hmm. small staff here, but we get a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of, a, you balance between the current exhibitions then years out. Exactly. Months out. It's, yes. It's wearing a lot of different hats, juggling different timelines, different mm -hmm. projects all at once. It's kind of, that's exciting. Yeah. Is there a, may I interject, you're saying the current exhibition, is there a certain style that you, because you said there were two paintings, so is there a style mm -hmm. for the way you're installing? Um, this As the, the Basquiat show is quite different. A lot of exhibitions will do, you know, will include, you know, 50 works, 100 works. But with this, just focusing on two pretty major paintings, That's you're a getting different. a really close yeah. look at an artist and his process. So it's a bit of a different um, curatorial model, but it's one that I think will be quite effective. And it gives a chance, you know, we don't see a lot of Basquiat works in Tampa. So it gives our audience um, an opportunity to see works they might not see very often. Yeah, no, that's like super exciting. And you've, like before you came here, you've done work at the Jewish Museum for Correct. Like 11 years, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So yes. what was the work like there? Very similar. I mean, we were a larger team, but um, still working on a number of exhibitions there. Um, my work there was mostly focused on, again, contemporary work. There we had a team of 12 curators and every curator had a bit of their own specialty. Wow. So the difference primarily between the two positions is that here, since I'm, you know, um, the only curator of modern contemporary, I oversee a broad kind of span of time. So our collection spans from about, uh, let's see, like the late 18th century up to the present. Wow, that's a yeah. big yes. span. Whereas in New York, I focus largely on post-war mm. artwork, so post-1945. Do you like it more that you have like a broader... Thing you can work with or range of days yeah um, it's, a, it's a different set of responsibilities um, yeah. here it's really wonderful that I have a growing collection to work with um, there are people in the community who are so enthusiastic about what we're doing we have a lot of support here so it's just great to see not only um, the Tampa Museum of Art grow but just the arts community grow in general here in the past three years it's grown almost exponentially it has. I've yeah. seen it really take a turn yes and we have wonderful curators working at all of our institutions across the bay a really strong artist community so there's um, a lot happening here yeah so what made you want to come to Tampa in the first place like instead of like New York which is super artsy and like full of culture like why Tampa you know, it was the opportunity to help grow a program here. I think any curator would jump at the opportunity to get their hands um, really in the thick of things. And here, that's exactly what you're doing. New York is so full of um, people from a range of backgrounds, different experiences. But here, you know, we're, I think, amongst my curator colleagues at other institutions, there's probably about five or six of us. Wow. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of more opportunity. Exactly. So within the region, we have the opportunity to really, I think, um, show the community our own interests. We each have a different curatorial sensibility. 
Um, and it's nice to be able to share that here in New York because again, you're um, dealing, you're one of many different professionals in the city. It's not as I think visible the effect you have on the community. So what other challenges, like other than like essentially being short staffed here, mm -hmm. like have you faced since being here and setting up like exhibits? Any challenges? Mm -hmm. um, you know, being, um, I would rephrase that, we're not necessarily short staffed, we're just a small staff. And that just means that we... Quaint. Quaint. <laughs> intimate, very intimate. Yes, I'm it just sure. means that we learn a lot here. Every day brings a new learning opportunity. So, um, for example, um, you know, well, my specialty might be in more of one area of art, the fact that I can go back and research and learn more about, say, an early American artist from, the, you know, the dawn of the 20th century. Something like that is really exciting for me. So every day brings new learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what has been like your favorite exhibit here that you've done so far? In the past three years, do you have one that stands out? Favorite? That's difficult, though there are several that really stand out. Um, our Skyway exhibition, the collaborative exhibition between um, the museums across That's the region, seemed was really um, a highlight for me. Not only did it get, give me a chance to work with the other curators in the area, but it just also introduced me to the fantastic artists here. There's the about five museums that are involved. Four this year. Four? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you really, from Sarasota to Ringling to... Exactly. The one so in St. Pete, Pete to here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of excitement with that collaboration. Exactly. It's a so great project. Do you see that as like a common trend coming, like involving more local artists across like museums instead of like like keeping like the major works? Like it's a balance. I think we want to bring in the national international artists. So we expose and introduce um, our audience to artists they might not see, but then also really support the local artists in the community. So it's just a, yeah, really balancing yeah. both. I like both that. initiatives. So speaking of trends, like what kind of trends do you see coming towards the like, museum? Like what mediums do you see? Maybe in with, Tampa yeah. that we, you haven't seen yet. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily a medium, but I think it's the act of collaboration. Yeah. Where it's artists either collaborating with one another, curators collaborating, museums collaborating. I think we're all just trying to um, work together and put kind of our... Um, utilize all of our skills in the most significant, powerful way we can. And it, are the collaborations usually like social concerns or? It completely varies. Anything. Yeah. yeah, I know more artists are becoming more and more engaged with social practice. My colleague up at USF, Sarah Howard, is um, particularly significant in kind of propelling that in our area. Um, Catherine Pill over at the MFA St. Pete is also quite interested in um, you know, looking at art through a feminist lens, I think I'm more of a formalist, um, meaning I look at um, kind of object image first and then mm -hmm. kind of analyze things. So we're all quite different um, and every museum, every curator will bring a different interpretation. That's exciting. And the collaboration brings that uniqueness, right? Yeah. not just one certain not lens. Not just one perspective, right, yeah. a variety right. of so, for artists to collaborate like with you in the museum, how mm -hmm. would they go about doing that, specifically with the TMA? You know, we um, I receive a lot of inquiries from artists. I'd always say that the best thing to do is to just, you know, submit materials for our consideration. Um, you know, while I might not pick our exhibitions from, say, a blind submission that comes through the door, it's always interesting and um, helpful to see what an artist is doing. So an introduction just you know, a simple introduction over email is, is perfectly fine. Have you ever seen a submission that's just like taking you like off guard? Like this is, I have to have this. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. A wow factor. I have. A wow factor. Come, yes, it comes through um, every so often and they're really, really wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I guess I want to kind of end it with like, what advice would you give like artists now to get more involved, like not just with Tampa, just in general, mm -hmm. like in their community and like how they can like, promote themselves like mm -hmm. the best way they can you know um, I think that the best thing it's not really um, promotion but I think the best thing that an artist or even an emerging curator the best thing they can do is to just be patient being an artist mm -hmm. working in the arts is um, challenging and I think if you're really passionate and if you take the time to dedicate yourself to the field whether that be you know going out and painting or photographing or working in your studio every day I think consistency builds excellence so just to keep working hard that's the best I think that's advice, advice I have that's for great. any artist 
anybody working in the arts. Yeah, we haven't heard somebody say like, just be patient. Like I've always heard like, yeah, you just have to keep doing it, like keep going, be consistent. But like, I think a lot of people get fed up with like, I produce so many works, but nothing's happening. So they just like, remind oh, like, yeah. yeah. I think success is often measured as immediate. And especially in today's world with right. the social media exactly. and the, yeah. and it takes time to build to build a craft. There's no overnight success. It takes exactly. eight decades of yes. work and practice and networking. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're really busy. Yes, you're little. Oh, thank so you. I, we can't wait for the fall exhibition. Yeah. We have to come back. Oh, we will. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.